Yeah, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining today, another edition of Wildlife Conservation of India. Yeah. Hope all are fine. Yeah, good evening, Nagaraj. Yes, five o'clock. Malay Vanakam. Namaste to everyone. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, today we are going to have a very interesting uh, speaker, Mr. Ananda Krishnan Srinivasan. Uh, he is going to talk about uh, <coughs> diversity in Indian wildlife. And uh, before introducing him, before welcoming him, uh, I would like to address a few things. I got one question from one of my young photographers. Uh, so he was asking, please, what about my thoughts on nesting photography? Because I'm getting a lot of nesting uh, photographs, <coughs> images. Uh, so he was asking me, is it good to post on Instagram and all? So before starting this session, I would like to address this issue. Because uh, most of the participants and followers are on uh, photography lovers are doing photography. So this comes under ethic, wildlife ethics. Okay. If you come across nesting, uh, don't disclose the place and uh, don't share the photograph in any social media forum anyway. Even international forum also, they are not allowing nesting photograph. Contest also, they won't be allowing. Of course, you will be seeing photographs. It must be taken with camera tape and with, without disturbing nesting, they would have taken. But it depends on why the reason is, once if you go for photography near nesting, definitely you are disturbing the uh, scene, okay? It helps you to predate to attack the uh, eggs and all. Sometimes the parenting birds will uh, uh, leave the nest, they abandon the nest. So that's why uh, we have to behave as a responsible wildlife photographer, respect, and love wildlife. If the ethics you have to draw, where to draw uh, wildlife ethics, okay? So it depends on your uh, consciousness, whether you want to do photographs, of course, some nesting, some baby chicks uh, with uh, photographs and all, you may be getting wow and a lot of like, but it's not good for the wildlife, okay? I hope I address this issue. All my young <laughs> photographer fans and all, please remember when they are feeding also, don't disturb them, okay? Let them feed their chicks, babies. Okay. Okay. Let us today. I would like to uh, introduce uh, Mr. Ananda Krishnan, Srinivasan. Ananda Krishnan is uh, based out of Mumbai and photography is hobby. He works as a daytime as a consultant in a lubricant process design, uh, project management, and cultural transformation. But before joining, doing this work, last uh, 22 years, he was uh, working as a cell. Uh, company in various uh, uh, assignments, uh, various managerial capacities and national and global level, he is a globe trotter, okay, South Africa to London, he used to travel abroad only, but uh, 2015, he left his uh, job and he, he started pursuing his hobby photography. So after that, I think he is crisscrossing India, India and South Asian countries also. Today, he is going to share his photograph and his experience and because uh, even he never, he, you know, he is not very active on social media and we even uh, myself also, many of our friends have never seen his photographs. Okay. Today we are going to see his photograph and uh, let us welcome Mr. Ananda Krishnan Srinivasan. Please Ananda Krishnan, Ananda join us. Hello, madam. Good yeah, evening. Good evening, Hope good you are evening everybody. Fine. Very fine. Thank you, madam. Super. So tell me Ananda, before starting, no? Uh, as far as I know, you say you are a Golab trotter, okay? So whenever we say South Africa, London, and all, you are international traveler. 
that too with the business class but how do you find now uh, traveling inside india for the photography almost your uh, season and all you are always on the travel for photography how was the experience so ma'am i think if i compare my uh, work travel with what i am doing now i think the biggest thing is in work travel you get to a destination then you go into a meeting you go through all the stress and come back here you go to a destination you actually relax in a jungle okay. so i feel like i am back home mm -hmm. to my own elements and i really love being with uh, animals and birds so okay. it's a completely different experience okay. so when i get to a jungle i don't feel tired after that and when i come back home also i don't feel tired okay. because i come back rejuvenated super super yeah please start you can share your uh, ppt and uh, great i hope you can see my uh, screen now yes fantastic so in in today's session i would actually like to discuss um the diversity in india mainly in india but maybe a few countries that are around india in in this region let us say geographic region um and then i would like you to take you to different places so for me it's very difficult to uh, show you photographs from all the places i have visited so i have picked uh, some to try and see if i can inspire all of you to start uh, Uh, traveling and uh, visiting these places and uh, viewing the wildlife and the diversity in india okay so let me start with some data um we as of 2019 i think we have something like 1300 1400 species which are um recorded in india um, as you can see there is a very small proportion of that is endemic the rest is uh, migratory so either they migrate from different countries or they migrate within india so for example there are birds that come from either sri lanka or kerala to north uh, of india for breeding so there is that migration happens and i think geographically india is in a very very uh, lucky space if you ask me um because if you look at the uh, the statistics the land uh, you know the forest cover in india is about 2% of the world forest cover but we get about uh, 5 to 10% of the species of birds in the world okay so i won't go into the number of species that are recorded in the world there is a huge discussion going on whether it is 10000 20000 million there are those numbers but let's say that between 5 and 10% of those species kind of visit india or are endemic to india so that way we are very blessed uh, to have uh, so much variety actually we are supposed to have 33% in any country you know 33% is a forest forest cover area but still we haven't declared any new nature parks anything for the last uh, few years and all. so it's still uh, we are yet to cover the 33% in forest cover now i think 22 to 21 you can say right yeah absolutely the latest uh, the survey of india record is of 27.4% but then only um, i think less than 2% is national parks if you really see there is yes. 404 national parks but there is quite a lot of important birding areas and lot of local you know forests bushes and so on so um that's where we are yeah uh, like i said quite a lot of migratory birds visit india uh, there are passage migrants to birds that come and settle here uh, during winter in other places uh, there are endemic birds that uh, in fact all these birds start breeding around monsoon but if you want to look at their you know see their breeding plumage um, you would usually get the endemic birds 
the other birds if you are lucky enough you know you start uh, uh, looking for them very close to the breeding season which is around end of may june uh, you may end up getting some in breeding plumes uh, right as majority of I uh, like sarus crane, pheasant, tail, jagna, and all. No, even we, by, by, yeah, we were birds and all. After monsoon only, they do usually. They Absolutely. want water. Yeah. Right. So yeah, some birds want water. So painted stock, for example, they start breeding during monsoon and then lay eggs uh, just after monsoon. Yes. So yeah. Um, so in, in essence, if you are visiting national parks for animal photography, then the time is very limited. During monsoon, a lot of these uh, tiger parks are closed. Though buffer region, some places are open, but where you, you know, tend to get uh, mammals in a big way, they are not operational during monsoon. Okay, And pop, people uh, go for macro photography during monsoon, so that is very popular. Right? Uh, having said that, let's look at... Um, I would like to take you to my personal journey initially before going into the uh, diversity of India. So I, I actually started, like uh, Ratika Ma'am said, I started my hobby photography in 2015. It was the end, I think. Um, I actually bought a camera. Then I said, I want to go into wildlife photography. And I was looking for mentors. That's when I chanced upon uh, Madam's uh, masterclass workshop. Uh, so I attended the workshop. And I must say, I captured something. I averaged about 2,000 photographs a day. And I have only kept about 10. Yeah, so my biggest job during those four or five days was to delete uh, whatever I had taken. But the deletion has given me so much learning. Yeah. And... Uh, that one workshop was my biggest uh, launch pad and inspiration in um, going to various places in India, you know, pursuing my photography, uh, trying to be a bit more creative. So the mentorship of Madam really helped me in, in going that route. What you see here is my initial photographs. So I just want, wanted you to keep that in mind as we go along. Okay. So uh, let me um, go into the diversity of India and I'll try and take you to different places through my lens and camera. Uh, okay. So let's start with the south of India. And I have included Sri Lanka because some of the bird life are kind of common between Sri Lanka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu. Uh, so let's start with Yala. Um, so... If, if you happen to see peacock and peahen during breeding season, this is how they will look like. And essentially, the peahen will be generally disinterested in the dance. So we need to be interested in the dance uh, and get some nice photographs, but it is very, very colorful. Okay. Uh, so Yala offers quite a lot of diversity. Um, and I was extremely lucky, I must say, to... Uh, go to Yala, and that was my first trip after Bharatpur. So the, the story is that I was in Bharatpur, and I was struggling to learn wildlife photography. And then suddenly, Madam comes to me and says, you know, uh, four of us were supposed to go to Yala. One person is dropping out. Are you interested to come? So imagine a beginner getting mentorship from Madam for free, and uh, there are two other photographers who were also uh, senior photographers. So I, I had a chance to learn from everybody full week. And then I never turned back. So that was the beginning of my travel through India uh, and few of the neighboring countries, right? So you can see the kind of diversity that Yala can offer. You suddenly see a a small puddle of water where a crocodile and a, a buffalo, wild buffalo coexist, to a juvenile uh, changeable hawk eagle taking bath or a fly literally walking into the mouth of a blue tail uh, 
be eaten. And I would okay. add this one: uh, the yala, the bats are very friendly. Absolutely, they are very very friendly. Eight to four hundred mm. Also, we got lot of bats very near uh, focal length. Uh, absolutely, madam. This photo, for example, is at two hundred mm fo focal length. So I I must say one thing: yala is known for leopards, and uh, our guide was one of the best in Sri Lanka. But he was very surprised when, especially Madam stopped the jeep every time there was a bird sighting, and we were stopping for birds, and we hardly uh, got to see a leopard. I think only twice. I think there, so, there, they only we sighted leopard because we are stopping birds, birds, no? Let us see our birds there. Yeah. yeah, and the birds, the photographs we got were amazing. So I only picked up very few here. Um, as you can see, this this sunbird was sitting so close. Uh, so I just couldn't stop myself from taking this. Yeah. So this was the first leopard sighting uh, we had there, and uh, I, and this was the first leopard that I am seeing, and I am seeing through my lens. And I was wondering why there was so much crowd, people who were, you know, on the road just waiting for this fellow to come out. Uh, this is a sub adult. Uh, leopard he was on top of a tree uh, and i said okay let me capture uh, whatever i can get and i was so lucky that this fellow was looking straight into my lens so i just clicked that photograph and i never showed it to anybody because i thought this is a very bad photo so i don't know whether it is good or bad when i looked at it recently i really loved it i said let me now uh, showcase this Okay, so from Yala, let us go to Andaman. Uh, Andaman Nicobar Islands have quite a lot of endemic diversity that they can offer. Uh, so you can spend months there and still not sight all the bird life, right? So these are a couple of unique owls that you can see there. So on the left is the, is the Andaman scops owl. Uh, and then you have the uh, Andaman hawk owl. Uh, and here on the left is the hewn uh, owl. And then the Andaman uh, woodpecker. Uh, you also get to see yellow bitten there and then Andaman imperial pigeon. So there is quite a lot of birds that you get in the, uh, I would say, the mainland of India. But in Andaman, they look very different. So there are differences in those and they are classified as separate species. Subspecies, yeah. Yeah, subspecies, sorry. Right. Uh, monarch you get here, so you can see the male and the female uh, on each of these photographs. Uh, I was waiting for them to come into the same frame, but they never did. Uh, so let us, from Andaman, let us come to Kerala. Uh, Usually, Tatekard offers huge variety of bird life, but Tatekard is the jungle itself is not a very, uh, I would say, a good forest for photography because of the canopy, but it is a fantastic birding place. I was extremely lucky to see this fight uh, of a couple of blithe uh, starlings. Um, in, in Tatekad. So the the classic species there is the Sri Lankan frog moth. But I thought this, this I really like this photograph. So I thought, let me uh, put this up. Okay, so from south of India, let's move quickly to west and central India. So as you know, there is quite a lot of places in Maharashtra, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh that, that offers lot of variety. So starting with Maharashtra, this fellow is a monsoon visitor to Maharashtra. You can usually see oriental dog kingfisher in Kerala, in Tatekar, but because of the canopy, you may not see uh, this fellow very much in the open. Um, but when they come to Maharashtra, they come for breeding. So it's very likely that you can see them uh, 
you know, somewhere catching prey. Yeah. But this again, when you go to photograph, uh, especially ODKF or any bird in breeding season, you must be very careful not to go anywhere near the nest. So their behavior is essentially they bring insects and, and birds, uh, insects and food for their chicks, but they go far from the nest and catch it. So if you can observe their behavior from a distance, you can actually be 200, 300 meters away from the nest and get very good photographs like this. Yeah, this fellow was actually taking this to the nest and the nest was very far. Uh, so, and I was very lucky to get light this way. A spotlight and the background was completely dark. Yeah? Um, when the light improved, the background was like this. This is the same location, uh, uh, but the different individual. Okay? Um, and nearby this place, you also get to see uh, blue-eared uh, kingfisher which is not the most common. Uh, you get to see them when they come for breeding to Maharashtra. Okay. So from here, let's move to slightly to the coastal side. So this photo is actually from Jamnagar. Uh, there is a, is a fantastic place for the weathers, uh, for everyone, no? If anyone yeah. want to suit where water birds and where does, you know, Zaman is the best place to go. Absolutely, madam. Yeah. You, you can actually spend months there, if you ask. Yes. So there is variety of, so this beach is called the Narara Marine uh, National Park. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two other national parks. So one is a jungle where you can walk. There is another beach. Uh, there is also the local forest. There is the you drive a bit uh, from Jamnagar, you get to the salt pans. So there is a lot of variety there. And as you said, madam, you can get a lot of species if yes. you go to Jamnagar in season. And I was lucky to get this. This is a subadult uh, crab clover with a crab in its mouth. Uh, the I remember was behind the scene photograph, Ananda, you were lying down, no? Someone posted. Yeah, you're just absolutely. flatly you're lying down and 15 minutes you just uh, crawl up also. Yes, that so that, thanks for I level photography. Me. I level right. photography. Yeah, so this photograph and maybe the next two, this one especially. Um, in sun. Narara, I actually, I was wearing a raincoat and uh, I covered my camera completely. So this is low tide. Um, this place is full of rocks. So I lie down and I probably crawl for nearly 200 meters and then lie down there. So for, for this, uh, this is a Jarek uh, um, sandpiper. For this fellow to come near me, I think I was, I had to lie down and wait for nearly half an hour. Uh, this bird was a bit far and I was waiting and waiting and fortunately he came and he found a crab. So I could get him very, very close and very lucky to get the yellow legs uh, in the frame. Uh, and then this is a lesser sandpiper. Um, so for some reason they were all coming close to me and fishing. <laughs> but I had to lie down and I was lying down for... Uh, nearly a couple of hours and then moving back to the tide. As the tide starts coming in, you start crawling back. So you get quite a lot of variety there. Uh, so from uh, Jamnagar, let us move to GRK. Uh, GRK and LRK, there is, this is one of the jewels, I would say. Uh, so this is a Hukolar. Uh, in LRK, people drive, I think, for some 70, 80 kilometers to get this. In GRK, you have to be extremely lucky to get this and get this very close, So, which I was. Um, so this individual actually allowed me to lie down on the ground, crawl near it, and it was actually searching for food. Uh, so it, it allowed me to get so close that 
this is what i ended up getting um so nice close up and a nice one uh, i i actually had it so i can see the catch light and i right so i i i had to focus this manually mm. and i was very very lucky that this uh, bird allowed me to you know be near it for a lot of time so this this photo i got it after three tries i think um because i just put in focus because it's very very close so then um and the third attempt i got this right so from uh, sorry i just skipped a couple of photographs so from grk let's jump to lrk um, lrk most of you might know is uh, is a desert area uh the surface is very dry but at times you get this water coming from the river or from the nearby water body flowing in so what that tends to do is this water is very shallow um and very still but the nearby ground becomes very soggy so this imperial eagle was sitting on this uh, particular stone there were about 25 photographers there all of us were sitting in their cars and uh, trying to capture this then i suddenly realized that the reflection on the still water was amazing but if i stand i won't get the bokeh that i was looking for so i laid down and then i crawled and so beautiful yeah. beautiful on uh, and uh, good reflection no beautiful shot yeah absolutely thank you madam so when i crawl i realized that i was actually sinking into the mud <laughs> but then i couldn't stop myself i wanted the reflection so i took the shot allowed the bird to fly off and then some five people had to come and lift me up and i had about 5 6 kilos of mud on my dress so yeah but then i think so it was it, worth it, it no it's absolutely worth it right so lrk apart from the bird life it also offers uh, desert foxes and these typically uh, breed around february um, and they deliver their pups between march and then april when it starts getting to be very very hot in lrk so um i had this dream of getting those pups i i still haven't had my deep shot so my dream shot is with a wide angle lens but then i didn't want to disturb their uh, den so they are very shy then they will be very shy wide angle with uh, habitat shots no uh, right. it's very tough to re reach near them also they won't allow you to go very near absolutely madam then the the fear was you know if i go anywhere close mm. they will take the pups and run away yes, yes. so i decided against it i had spent three days and every day we used to come there before the sunrise and then lie down okay. so this was on a mound fortunately um i used to lie down my guide used to sit in the car and i used to send the car away okay and lie down there till about 9 9:30 when the light gets very harsh mm. you can see that this is early morning sunlight early morning light yes i can see the golden uh, no yeah right so the mother decided to come out and the one of the pups came out there were three in the den mm. so i had some beautiful moments with them sure. more than the photograph i think it was really lovely to see lovely them lovely to play. watch them yes i understood yeah absolutely it just gives you so much uh, plus uh, yeah happiness yeah so wow cute. you can see this wow. very cute and very these cute. are probably not even a week old okay so i was seeing the mother still licking the pups uh, you know to clean them wow. so probably 3 4 days old not beyond that uh, and they were playing um, so you can see that they are still trying to get familiar with each other mm. and then trying to run and so on so i have some videos maybe in another session i can show that this this may be too heavy to do that yeah uh, 
So this is really what you get if you are willing to spend some time in the hot sun, lie down, mm -hmm. and then you know get hot yourself. So it, it's really nice to see that. Um, moving on, you also during that time you also do, uh, get uh, short year down. Uh, so I was really lucky to get this individual who stayed there, um, but then. It took me about half an hour or 45 minutes of crawling. So I got down about 100 meters away and then I said, I need a close-up shot of this individual. So I crawled about five meters, stayed there, crawled, stayed there, crawled, stayed there. So make sure that uh, this owl was trained and familiar with me on the ground. And then I had to pick up the camera. So it was a risk. Uh, it could have flown away. Uh, then fine, I would have lost the shot. But then I said, let me give it a try. So it was really worth it. And then on the other side, I found that this Harrier was coming and sitting and giving me a pose. So they were on opposite sides, uh, mm -hmm. looking at each other. Uh, because I was close, I couldn't get them in the same frame. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, LRK again. Now, uh, I think I have been to LRK four or five times. Five uh, times, yeah. Very lucky to be able to go there. Uh, it's not far and from Bombay. Very lucky to get the sun also like this, uh, Ananda. Even I had been there a few times. But whenever we wait, waiting, we are waiting for the sun to set like this. Some hats will be there. It's not as clear sky. But I think you are uh, you are lucky that day that you are getting the sun like sun like this. So I think Sydney is an LRK. India only few places you will get sun like this, you know? Correct. Yeah. You are lucky Sitting to, right uh, on the ground. Yeah. yeah. And I was extremely lucky. I didn't realize how lucky I was. In fact, this was my very first trip to LRK. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, and I was very lucky. I saw the sun setting. So maybe let me show you the next photograph and then we. See, so this was the first scene I saw mm -hmm. the sun setting and mm -hmm. the wild asses walking towards it. So I was trying to see which is the best place. Now I had gotten out of the vehicle, so with the camera, I was just running all over the place mm -hmm. just to see. And then I light down um, and took this shot from the ground, and then the wild asses were moving away. So I I was imagining a scene like this. Okay. Um, and then the sun started setting, you know, on the ground. And suddenly there were three other individuals. They came from the back. So I was extremely lucky. Mm. And the next, I think, four or five trips, I've never seen sunset like this. Not only lucky, he, place like this, he had to prepare Ananda. We, we had to be there exact time, no? First itself, we had to go and uh, keep yourself where the sun will be setting and all. It's not only about lucky that you randomly walk and you will getting like this. Yeah. So I think uh, two, three times or one time, first day, second day, you have to check where the sun is setting. So you have to wait for the opportunities. It's not only about lucky in wildlife photography. Lot of preparation. Right. And the planning and if you dedication also. If you right. go, if you Absolutely. Do, then you will get Yeah. It. Thanks for reminding me, madam. For this photo, in fact, uh, I think I went to the same place uh, continuously for three days. This is the fourth day. Mm -hmm. So all the three days there were either clouds or haze or something, or when the sun is proper, you don't get any animal. So Fourth day, these wild asses were there, so I sensed an opportunity. I light on, on the ground, and uh, this was very late in the evening, probably about six forty-five, uh, and very far into LRK. So by the time we, I came back to the room, it was like eight eight thirty. Uh, so I had a very good driver, I must say. So he could drive in the dark inside the uh, run. So driving in the run is actually a challenge. Yeah. Challenging, yeah. Right. So let's move on to Kadoba. Um, the Central again, India. Tiger, the Central India for the tigers. Yeah. yeah. This is really one of the uh, tiger places. Uh, but the story behind this is 
this trip i think i had about uh, seven or eight safaris in the first five safaris i never sighted a tiger in fact no birds it was going empty uh, i could only sight uh, some spotted deer and uh, gaur and so on so i was getting a bit edgy and then one early morning uh, we go and suddenly find this fellow is a very famous tiger in kadoba patkaso people who go there they might know this male tiger mm. he was lying down near a water body early morning um, because he was lying down there were about 7 8 jeeps there and no space then i suddenly saw this tree uh, and he was lying right behind the tree so to the left of this place so i said okay i told my driver go and stand right in front of this gap far um, uh, with a distance of course so that i want to take a chance if this fellow comes through the gap i'll get a photo like this and uh, the framing yeah i had the framing in mind mm. but i wanted the light so i wanted him to come before the light gets harsh so it was about i think 7 o'clock when we sighted this fellow um, so i wanted him to come out in the next half an hour otherwise um, you can see i won't get the background mm-hmm. right so mm-hmm. i was very fortunate that there was a bunch of spotted deers moving behind us and he got very interested so he came running and he came through the uh, the gap and he was standing there so you can actually see i i wish he had a look into my lens but that is too much to expect so he is actually staring at the uh, spotted very deer far away, is, very far away yeah. Yeah. but it looks He's, like i can't act only for us <laughs> absolutely yeah so th- it was really nice this really made my trip and i didn't sight any more tigers after this so this was this was really enough for me uh, this again this is in tadoba buffer um so we were the first uh, team to go inside so we driver and my guide um so this was kind of uh, i think december if i'm not mistaken um and in tadoba the sun rises around 6:45 6:50 at that time but the gate opens at 6:30 so it's a bit dark so we went inside and suddenly this tigress with Uh, her three cubs were playing um, on the path. So we stopped there, and you can imagine this is near darkness. When I took this photograph, um, and I had to stay very still and take this at a slow shutter speed. So, in fact, you can see that the tigress's foot is blurred, and that yeah. is motion blur for slow walking. Yeah. so this shutter speed could have been 100 or something on a 500 and on that even 100 i doubt it could be even less i don't remember exactly but this was really sh- uh, slow shutter speed but i was very very fortunate and i was the only one there there was nobody else i was sitting there and enjoying them uh, you know walking around and so so on so this was another very very prized uh, moment for me um and then um in tadoba so we were actually waiting for a uh, tiger to come out of the water body and then suddenly this young monkey comes and looks at me so i realized that he was looking at me from the top and i just uh, you know focused on him and took this photo and i really like this expression Yes. um so and this was just a fleeting moment after that you know he he just uh, jumped to the next branch and went away because a tiger was nearby so moving on this is ratnapur you may be wondering why i am not showing a tiger picture from ratnapur uh i've been to ratnapur again four times and this was actually a special trip for me um so i had booked five or six safaris i don't remember yeah six safaris and two of them were actually half day 
So you go from 6.30 in the morning till lunchtime uh, and get your, take your chance in sighting tigers. And that time, there were at least three tigers with at three cups each. And they were all coming out and playing in the water bodies. And this was like June, peak of summer. So I had, you know, I went there with all the expectations saying, this time I will get cubs. I will get to see them play nothing. Throughout the six uh, safaris, I got nothing. That's but I got life, this yeah. shot. That is the wildlife. No? Sometimes yeah. tiger, even uh, after um, five, six safari also, you won't get anything. I know how many times in gym car, but without a single tiger sighting, I come back. It, it's Absolutely. a right leg, yeah. Absolutely, madam. But this photo, I, you know, made my trip actually. If I hadn't got even this, I would have been happy just for the experience. But this photo actually made it. Uh, and this was actually standing on a mound. Um, and the... Uh, fawn actually came running. So that, that's when I noticed it and started drinking milk. So I, I really loved the expression on the mother's face. Yes. Good eye contact right. and good compost. Yeah. Right. Thanks, man. Uh, this is again, um, you know, one of the subadults eating a sambar deer uh, from Rantambur. Um, but I would probably say I like the photo on the left uh, really well, though the light was extremely harsh. So it was a very, very challenging moment for me to capture this. Uh, but I had never seen a, a you know, a, a, a monkey kid that was as active as this one. Mm -hmm. um, so I was watching it and suddenly, you know, he latched on to the tail of the mother and started swinging. So that's when I, I got this shot. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it was again a moment for me that to see him do this. And since then, I've never seen any monkeys do this. Okay. Uh, so wow. from Rantampur, let me take you to Tal Chapar. Mm -hmm. Tal Chapar, again, there is the uh, sanctuary, which is a very small place, but there are a lot of areas that are around Tal Chapar. But this photo is actually from inside the sanctuary. Uh, and because there are no predators, you can actually get down uh, here. So I noticed these, uh, there were a few black bucks that were running through the grass. And I was hoping and praying that they jump. Uh, and I was lying down on the ground. Uh, then I realized if I lie down, I won't get the angle. So I just sat on the ground and these two fellows really started, you know, came and said, okay, Anand, now click me. And I clicked them. Yeah. It was really nice to see them giving me the same pose. I only wish that they were in the same focal plane, but then you don't get everything. So maybe next trip, I'll get something like that. Um, so and then I moved on and saw this kestrel flying towards me. Um, and then suddenly the kestrel decided to come and you know, sit on the stump. So Tal Chapar has these, uh, they have these uh, stumps that they uh, put on the side of the path. Um, so that I these think three focus, can... we can do a lot of uh, landing and take off some. Tal Chapar is the best man. raptor uh, photography. If we free focus the stumps, you can have <coughs> landing take off shots. Absolutely, Bob. This you can see that because this one is more or less in the same plane as the stump, um, I got this very sharp uh, with, with, with the flight. Yeah. Uh, but for me, I think this was one of my toughest uh, shots. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really know about double exposure at this time. Okay. If I knew, then. I would have actually taken the sun and, and the uh, roller both in focus. But then I, I decided that, you know, I want the sun, but I really don't want the roller in uh, silhouette. Okay. Yeah. Because for me, the focus was the roller landing on the sun, uh, this stump, and 
fortunately for me the roller was coming and landing on the stump uh, once or twice i saw this from a distance so this one was probably trying to get some food uh, it was sunset time maybe throughout the day it didn't get anything so i had calculated that uh, probably uh, it will come and sit on the stump out of four times Uh, and the sun was setting so this is i also lucky shot ananda this is also lucky shot extremely lucky shot, shot ma'am hmm. yeah extremely lucky because getting the sun in that angle uh, yes. was very very lucky uh, so and i wanted the backlit uh, of the wings and i got it that moment hmm. was really nice so uh, in fact you know it is moments like this that fulfill you if i go back to the question you asked me ma'am at the beginning yeah uh, it doesn't matter whether you know whether you are traveling across the globe but when you get a moment like this it just fills your heart that mm-hmm. you you really you know usually we say no one shot will paisa vasula even for four three days if you got one yeah. shot like this then it's your trip uh, shooting is fulfilled yeah really okay. yeah it do teen bar paisa was right so from there let's move on to panna uh, so panna is another tiger sanctuary uh, but panna uh, has less tigers even now which means that you get to see leopards there so in, in my trip i saw a couple of leopards i saw a tiger but then i somehow liked uh, this particular moment um, because the uh, roller was eating and it was tossing then i realized that uh, you know the insect it was still not swallowing the insect so i realized that i could actually get the sangle and then the bee opening and usually do the tossing uh, sort uh, usually you know the rollers no rollers right. will usually eat before eating they toss and take if you are very fast enough to catch sir no freeze no then we can get a accent sir right so i i was again lucky to get this insect very close to the beak mm. uh, so usually they toss very high um the, in fact i was thinking the other roller will grab it but it it looked very disinterested so later on it also hunted and ate something um this is from bandogad barasingha so barasingha oh, yeah. okay so and and this is typical of barasingha to have this dry grass on their uh, horns yeah like a crowd no it was so pretty yeah. okay. absolutely so they they start eating the grass and they look at you and suddenly <laughs> you have this uh, Uh, in their horns so it, and this was a very nice moment so that that i could capture and again early morning light so and all these are tiger parks but if you really see i think tiger is there but there are a lot of other moments that lot of other animals, animals days and other uh, even year to enjoy the forest also like swamp deer lot of other deers other animals also there birds also there even kana bandav garanda no people used yeah. to try only they are looking tiger tiger they are going after tiger only right. tiger if you are sighting it's fine but other than tiger also you can go for other species also yeah absolutely so you do get really beautiful moments so okay. let me quickly go to east not east and then come back to uh, the yeah i India. think we getting a uh, time is also thing uh, right so yeah. i think it's fine quickly yeah. so yeah. i'll quickly move through this Mm-hmm. this is from mangal jodi uh, uh, so this is burhan uh, meeting mangal jodi is is a place where you get a lot of action but it is also a, a great place that has a very inspiring story i think about 20 years back um, you know if you drive along the road from uh, bhubaneswar uh, through mangal jodi on the road side you can buy uh, all kinds of exotic ducks so you can buy a grelag goose for about 30 rupees mm. uh, and then cook and eat so it was a poacher's paradise at that time and i heard that people used to kill these birds in tens of thousands thousands the, yeah the villagers yeah 
then came an NGO and they realized that this was one of the very important migration spots for the birds. So they started working with the local poachers and then trained them to become guides and they became guides. So the best poachers in in uh, Mangal Jodi are the best guides even today. Poachers become protectors. They become a guide and boat men and all. Now it's right. I think one of the uh, well preserved uh, uh, backwater uh, water body. Absolutely. Yeah. And the most inspiring story, if you ask me. So you get quite a lot of action. So this is a pre-made fight of two uh, males of bronze wing Jakana. Um, I have a whole series, but I don't want to bore you with that. And then this is a very common scene in Mangal Jodi. So you do get these uh, uh, godwits Black fighting. Black tail godwits. Oh, God Black tail godwits fighting. So they are not hugging, they are actually fighting, uh, right? And they fight for territory. Uh, and then I was also very lucky to get this right in front of me. Um, Black okay. Yeah, this is uh, Black Wind's tilt uh, mating. Okay. Um, and then you will have Heron Solarone. Uh, and suddenly you will find them catching a snake or something and eating it. Uh, so Mangal Jodi is essentially full of action. I would encourage you to. Um, take time and visit that place. Uh, from Mangal Jodi, let's, let me move to closer to Calcutta, Sundarban. So again, I was very lucky to see this from the boat. So this is not a macro shot. I took it from the boat and they were kind of close for me to just hang out of the boat and uh, take this. So mudskippers, they suddenly decided that they are going to fight. Um, and it was a very fleeting fight. They got into this and then uh, disappeared into the mud. Okay. So you do get to wow. see this uh, very, very rarely. Uh, but then mangroves have its own beauty. So when you see a deer, you can see the kind of vegetation uh, they stand in. So it's really a beautiful scene. Or a tiger. So it's not like the tiger sighting in other places. Yeah, it's a special. If you are lucky, if you sight a tiger in Sundarban, you must be a special person, no? Special, like if you have to feel yeah, like Yeah, absolutely. They yeah. have different era, yeah. Mm. And I had to spend four or five days in a boat uh, for doing this. Yeah. And then the sighting was a fleeting, I think about 30 seconds. That's all. And the tiger was gone. Okay. So you, you get all kinds of kingfishers there. Uh, so brown wing, as a black cap kingfisher, you get collared kingfisher, you get the collar common kingfisher, uh, and if you are lucky, you also get the ruddy kingfisher. Uh, but I haven't seen good photographs of ruddy kingfisher from Sundarban yet. Maybe one or two. Okay, so let's move on to Mahananda. This is very close to Darjeeling. Uh, it's just to show the variety of birds you can get there. So uh, the, the rufous-throated um, hornbill is a, is a rare species. The number of individuals in the world are quite few. Uh, this is a male. Um, and you have a streaked uh, spider hunter. Uh, streaked or streaked-throated, I'm not sure. Um, and then a black cap. Uh, it's a blue cap rock, rock thrush. There's quite a lot of variety, so I'm not going to go through every single photo. Uh, but when I was there, it was raining, and then I suddenly saw these huge horde of uh, frogs mating. Uh, and then I said, okay, let me capture that. Um, you can also see the mountain imperial eagle uh, there. Moving on to Sikkim uh, from uh, West Bengal. Um, you have this spotted laughing thrush. Uh, this one, thrush, yeah. this, no, one, this one is, is a very large one. Thrush. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, ma'am. No, no, this one is a uh, laugh, 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 laughing thrush, and right one is black faced laughing thrush. Black faced laughing thrush, yeah. So, very, very lucky uh, for them to come out in the open. They don't usually do. Uh, they can, came out and uh, I must say, post for the camera. So, it was a good moment. Um, 
this one is a, it, it has several different names so it's a bar throated minla uh, yeah it's a bar throated siva chestnut tail minla so you can call it anything you want um and on the uh, right is the uh, fire tail uh, sunbird mm. in its breeding plumage full breeding plumage so it very very lucky to have that so in in sikkim at high altitudes you do get these and the star of uh, himalayan mona yeah the himalayan mona uh, again this was flying all over the place so i could get it uh, there um so i'll take a slight detour into bhutan and come back to india uh, this this is a it's a very rare bird i think there is only about 180 individuals in uh, in the world and they are kind of distributed between bhutan and uh, one of the northeastern states i am not sure whether it is nagaland or uh, meghalaya it's one of those states so this is the white bellied uh, heron it looks like the grey heron but it is much bigger um, so i was extremely extremely lucky to sight this um, there are few of us who went on a organized tour to bhutan and, and we saw this in fact we saw this the previous evening in when it was very very dark and couldn't get up a photo but next day it was still there so it was trying to eat something in the water and then started flying so that's when i i got this um bhutan also has there are hundreds of species there uh, you do get these in northeast the main difference is that in in northeast because they hunt uh, these birds they are very shy in bhutan there is no hunting so they are bold human friendly they are easy to photograph absolutely man so they they might come in front of you so this is the ibis bill uh, which was trying to eat beads uh, from the water so i could get very close to it uh, or the wall creeper uh, this is the gray crested tit uh, again came very close uh, so i will this is just a sample of uh, what you can see in northeast so let me bring you back to the the pride of jungles i would say corbett bit of satal and barakpur yeah right so in corbett um, i have been lucky to go to corbett i think some 13 or 14 times i can't remember um i've been there in all seasons um and even now what i really like is winter sunrise summer sunrise when it is rise <laughs> raining sunrise 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 is always good so this i is in summer because you can see there is less water in bamganga uh elephants were fortunately crossing and the sun was rising so i i got this um but then this is in winter and it was very very misty because of the river the mist uh, tends to be there through the night and it only disappears when the sun uh, rises ago so this was just before the sun broke uh, the mountain uh, onto uh, and this particular uh, uh, askar decided to come and stand and look who was on the other side it was a bit far but then i decided i'll take a wide angle shot and see how it looks and then um again in winter the elephants decided oh, to nice. cross Lovely. water yeah uh, with the sun just peeping and seeing who is crossing the water um so winter again it is very misty but then whether it's misty not misty when the gate opens in dikala i am out in the jeep so you do get shots like this it is very misty you can get a silhet and suddenly the elephant is uh, taking a dust bath okay um, and then this was raining one of those summers if i remember it rained very heavily nobody was going out uh, and my driver said nahi saab chalte hain kuch milega 
so went out we got drenched and then once the rain stopped we saw a bunch of elephants elephants play so you can actually see that the uh, these the two elephants on the left are actually playing yeah? and then this is what you get when it rains okay, with clouds around with mist and the water falling so if you happen to see any animals yeah, walking it's then, the players are very it looks very beautiful yeah absolutely it's a beautiful scene um, but then if you get cows then they come and play so this is just after sunrise uh, you can see that uh, there is red light of, on these elephants so the golden hue is still there uh, but they were playing in water Now uh, this is one of unique moments for me in Calcutta. I've been there thirteen, fourteen times. It's the only time I saw. Uh, so this tigress you see hidden in the bush on the left. Uh, she walked through water, got up, and she was sitting there. Um, there's a bunch of three or four sambar deers, which are about three hundred meters away from the from the tigress. but then this bunch of otters decided to come on the river and they were very curious mm. where is the tiger so they actually saw the tiger crossing uh, they came out of the water and you can see they were actually looking at the tiger um, and then the tiger moved on and came very close to the sambar sambar yeah so if you notice the 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 mother is actually stam trying to stamp its foot because both had seen the tigers crouching there okay so and this is not a hunting scene because when the tigress starts running the sambar will run away so she was not very interested in uh, hunting anymore and she just looked at them and walked away yeah uh, so i have never got a scene after this this was just one trip Uh, That's is so beautiful, sir. Uh, so, so he predated and prey in one, and he got habitat, good habitats are uh, Nanda. Very Absolutely, good. yeah. So I, I use deliberately wide angle to take this. Okay. Um, so I had a five hundred mm, but five hundred mm wouldn't have got Very this. Close, so yeah, yeah. I applied my learnings from the master class one. Okay, super. Right. So this again is from Corbett. inspired by i must say some other photographer so one of the photographers i know he got a shot like this from kanthapur mm -hmm. but that was there was much more green behind the tiger but this fellow was this is a cub actually as a subadult i think about 16 months or so old um and uh, this decided to come and sit in the water the background was very dark and there was spotlight uh, falling on it so i said let me take a shot like this um and then in ram ganga when tiger comes and sits there even in the afternoon you can get shots like this because light may not be that harsh as you can see there was a spotlight effect because it was coming through the trees and the water really looked blue for me so this is from corbett but not from dikala this is from a different place um, um i think this is from jirna so there's only once that uh, decided to go there me and a friend of mine um and there are two rooms there so uh, two of us and there was another family who was staying there this is a male tiger and male tigers in these zones are very shy in fact male anything any animal is extremely shy um, they don't come out easily so in the afternoon when we came out for the safari we knew that this fellow was there we could see him hiding behind a tree far away so we wanted to see if he comes on the road uh, so we spent the full safari trying to be close to the tiger uh, and uh, by about 5:30 when the other uh, people who you know the tourists who come had left about 5:30 5:35 5:45 the gate closes so about 5:35 he started walking from his hiding place so we knew that he will sight him only challenge was light was extremely poor so i didn't know what i will get 
this fellow suddenly jumped across the road and you can see the white sand in front of uh, the tiger. Uh, that's river bed. So it's a dry river bed which uh, the tiger crossed. Uh, he ran. So I clicked some photographs, but I, since I couldn't get the shutter speed, I couldn't get any running or action shot. But then he went, stood there and looked back. So that was the moment for, for me. So he was giving eye contact. He was standing with flowers behind him. So I, I, I really also. loved yeah. this. Yeah. All right. So this is, again, you get this. It's not very difficult to get a shot like this if you have patience. Uh, but then I was very lucky to get this in early morning light. Uh, for a fish eagle, lesser fish eagle to actually take a fish and fly close to me. Yeah. So, like I said, I had spent about 13, 14 trips in Corbett. Every time I go, people will say, Are leopard villa wahan pe, yahan pe leopard villa. I had never seen a leopard in Corbett. This was my very last trip to Corbett. Uh, so, this was last December, between the first and the second lockdown, really. Um, and uh, we suddenly see this fellow sitting on a tree uh, early morning and I was wondering what is he doing there only because if you see he is looking to his left relaxing and, he relaxing yeah. he gave more than uh, two three hours he was, he was sitting there I got a pictures video from Sakil also from Father right. hmm. yeah he was actually sitting there from the previous evening madam Okay. So what happened was there is uh, there is a tigress mm -hmm. with the very small cubs in that area. Okay. So this fellow was very scared to get down. So for people who don't know this, tigers if they see uh, leopards, they just kill them. Yeah. yeah. Competition. So I think he was scared to come down. Uh, he was relaxing, which was good for us. So we could get some fantastic uh, photos. So early morning light, he was looking at us. And then this is where the tigress was actually carrying a kill uh, in the jungle. So we couldn't sight the tigress, but he could see it from there, okay. from the top, and he was very scared. So you can actually see the fear in the uh, leopard's eyes yeah, in that light. Yeah, so, I think uh, we have... Uh... Six, six, so the time is up. Uh, oh, okay. So let me yeah. quickly go through. Mm. Uh, so these are the cups that the that are, that are nearby. Wow. So we were also <laughs> lucky to see them uh, okay. for the first time. Mm -hmm. Very cute. So let me quickly move on. This is what you get in winter in uh, in Corbett if you uh, persevere. Yeah. So beautiful, beautiful. Get these beautiful shots. Quickly moving on to Sata. So in, in studio, again, you have patience. So you get stuff like this. So this is a, uh, a spot winged uh, starling, uh, which I had only seen once in my life. Uh, and then the white throated uh, laughing thrush feeding. Uh, so they were flying all over the place. Uh, let me quickly move to Parakur. Yeah, I won't spend time on this, this shot. So if you spend enough time near water, uh, you would be able to get flying shots. Shot of like action this. shots, yeah. Landing shots and take off. And uh, lucky, if you're lucky, we get a fighting shot or data shot also. Absolutely, yeah. Data fighting is only for Radhika Madam, not for everybody oh, no, many else. Many people are getting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I haven't quality. seen that quality, you know, quality of background and so on from others. So, we will live with this one. Yeah, super. So, yeah. So, and, and then, you know, you should be ready to dirty yourself. So, I was lying in mud uh, to get this fellow fishing. So, he was tossing it all over the place. Um, and then, Sarah's crane feeding its chick. Uh, to, this is something people who come regularly, you would have seen it from Guru. Uh, in, the, in the first webinar. So we were there together. Uh, very, very lucky to uh, see something like this. Or a, you know, glossy ibis with a frog. But for me, this was actually from last time. Uh, this was in the afternoon. The light was 
it was not harsh but it was kind of um, you know there was some cloud there so i realized that if i get the right shutter speed i can you know this these uh, chakals were they were eating something that was in the water so they had to dip their head in and they will have to come out and uh, shake the water off so it was very critical for them then i realized if i get the right shutter speed uh, this is what i can get so it took me some time to arrive at the right shutter speed uh, but i could actually get this series of shots uh, while they were feeding okay uh, and then spotlight usually don't get this but this time i was very lucky to get this spotlight or like madam was saying you get these fights so they were starting to fight then suddenly they lost interest and these two were going in two different directions right but these pondharons were definitely fighting right so but um, this one is the accent sort yeah and then morning so this happens in february when these neel guys get ready to breed so you get them coming together and starting to run so this is a male that suddenly decided to run in beautiful light so then i said let me capture this and the females uh, were also running but this was in slightly harsher light so you, you can see the difference yeah and sunset shots from bharatpur i'm sure is very famous sir signature shot yeah yeah so you have to sit in a place and and wait but again i was lucky to get this framing where uh, you know suddenly this data decided to open the wings and the sun was right on on the head right and this is one of the sunrise uh, yeah the signature uh, send off <laughs> some evening sun right. okay yeah i think that's it ma'am so yeah you can stop your sharing um, ananda i think we got questions and um, almost all questions i reply for the equipment uh, someone is asking uh, what are the equipment used that also we reply but i would li <coughs> like to suggest of course the subject knowledge you have to be there and other preparations are very important even with a basic camera lens also you can get lot of do lot of photography please don't ab obsess with equipment chahiye high end camera chahiye lens chahiye no only thing if you have good um, uh, you know the place if you go regularly if you sit also the birds will come very near to you like bharatpur jamnagar and all no? with 200 mm lens you can get good lot of good photography so don't think of um, uh, uh, the, we don't have high end lens sky and thing and all. don't ask uh, see good picture which lens which camera you ask no and uh, thank you uh, everyone i think uh, i i think almost most of the questions i replied in the question itself okay uh, because you explained everything ananda there is no need to ask questions at all it's uh, like all the diversity in india and a lot of new photographs i get a chance to see today also uh, hope everyone enjoyed and uh, thank you ananda it was very informative and pata hi nahi chalta the how time flies we are uh, above 6 12 it's going to be We really enjoy seeing all Thank the images and how uh, throughout uh, throughout India you covered. Okay, yeah. hope our participants, viewers also enjoy today's session, uh, guys. Uh, even next week also we have photography beyond beauty by Ranjani Narayanan and Sagar Gosvi is going to talk about our endangered snow leopards. It's going to be very informative and interesting session. please do join us for next week uh, weekend 5 pm and uh, meanwhile if you have any feedback if you like to uh, ask any uh, particular topic subjects and all do write to us wsi i india 2020 gmail.com and already we posted if you are on instagram or facebook do tag us and uh, if it's a good we will be featured thank you once again have a good evening and the tamil people all are malai vanakkam namaste everyone Have a good evening. See you next week. Thank, Thank you, Madam. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you uh, WCA team also. Okay. Thank you, guys. Good evening. Yeah.